pressure into prayer. Turn your pressure into prayer. Have you ever feel pressured? Oh, yes. And sometimes you don't know what to do. You don't have the answer. Don't know what to do. But turn your pressure into prayer. Hallelujah. And so when I look at the word pressure, it's telling me that it's a continual physical force exerted on or against an object by something in contact with it or pressure applied by someone. Can I get a witness in the house? It's that force. Praise God. Whether it's by a person or by a thing. Uh, a matter of fact, and if, if, the, if the force remain, if there's not some outlet, meaning if one doesn't give in, two things have to happen. Either you resist that pressure, and you're going to have to keep on resisting. Am I talking right? So you have to be strong enough to resist. Or that pressure stayed there and built up. And after a while, it explodes. We know our air pressure and our tire have to be at a certain level to keep the car going. The pressure in the gas line have to be at a certain level to keep the stove and the heat going. Can I get a witness here? Oh, hallelujah. Come on and tell the Lord, thank you. Jesus. Otherwise, we turn it on and no heat. And we turn it on and there is no gas. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. But I don't want to talk about the pressure from the, the gas or the car or the many scientific terms. I was doing a little research and then there's a lot of deep scientific terms that maybe somebody more intellectual than I can come up and do all that kind of stuff. But that's not where I'm going. I'm talking about the pressures of life. Because that's reality. We face that every single day. Can I get a witness here? No matter what we say, no matter what we do, we come in contact with that pressure. Sometimes it comes in the form of persuasion. Somebody is so persuasive. Beating down on you, and that's a strong term to use. But pressuring you to do certain things. And I'm telling you, they come in the morning. And they come in the afternoon. And they come in the evening. And they come in the night. And they come the next day. And seven days a week. Uh, it's just on you. Uh, and on you. Uh, and on you. Why? Why? And after a while. Uh, it's taking a toll on you. You feel so pressured. Sometimes it's an influence. That you feel pressured by. It's like everybody's doing it. Why? Why am I not doing it? What's wrong with me? Everybody seems to do it and get along. But yet, I can't do it and get along with it. And somebody say, because maybe you're not doing it right. Or maybe you just need to do it. And you sense that level of pressure, that thing that's influencing you, drawing you, drawing you, saying, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Yes, we are pressured. Another sense is intimidation. You weren't going to do it, but you're intimidated by somebody else. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Am I talking right? I was just listening to the, to the, to the radio this morning and the, the preacher was preaching and he said, Ananias and Sapphira who sold their position and gave to the church. And he, and he said, there was a one, one person, I think in the name of Josephus or Joseph or whatever, a, a member and he, he, Josephus, and he sold all his possession. Because the thought process behind it was that the Roman was coming to take over. And what's the point of him having all that uh, um, property and investment? Let, he just said, let me sell it and just give the money to the ministry. Let's see how much soul, how much soul we can reach before the Romans take over. So he sold everything and he brought it in and he gave it. And the Bible said in those days, he came and he laid at the apostles' feet. Ananias, Deacon Ananias and, and Sister Sapphira. They saw what happened. And the apostle called him sons of encouragement. 
And the preacher said, well, back in history, he said, when Ananias and his wife heard that, they said, boy, we could call, be called couple of encouragement. So we have a piece of property. So we are going to sell that property. And we are going to bring the money to the church. And he said, so they go ahead and they sold their property. But he said, when they saw the amount of money, when the money actually came into their hand, they changed their mind. And he said the reason why they changed their mind because it was never in them in the first place to do it. Oh, hallelujah. All they wanted was the glamour, the glee, and the recognition and the fame. So they changed their mind. I said, hey, you know what? We're just going to give a portion. Nobody won't know. And they agree together and walk in the house united. And the husband first gave and he died when he was questioning about the money. And, he, and she came in and she confirmed the same thing and she did too. Because it was never in them to do it. It's the influence. Just, just see somebody do it and become as, as, as somewhat covetous. Not even jealous, but covetous. Because if you were jealous or zealous about it, you would give everything. But if you're covetous, your purpose is just to get the fame and not really prove the point. He said, and that's what happened to them. So we're influenced by that, praise God. We're pressured by that intimidation and influence. Oh, hallelujah. And so it goes on and on and on. And then he talks about another person who couldn't take his church no more. He said, he don't want to be in the church. He, church, or, church or this and church or that. And so he said, he told uh, the late Spurgeon, he said, I'm going to find me a perfect church. I'm leaving this one and I'm going to find a perfect church. And Charles Spurgeon looked at him and said, oh yes, you're going to find a perfect church? He said, yes. He said, when you find one, do not join it. You will ruin it. When you find one, don't join it because you will ruin it. Can I get a witness here? And I smile, but it's true. Can I get a witness here? Because you yourself ain't perfect. So when you find a perfect church, do not go there. Don't become a part of it because you're the first one that's going to destroy it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Turn your pressures into prior for the Bible said Paul and Silas and Pastor do uh, through the power of the Holy Spirit a wonderful message last week uh, even though it wasn't preaching in, 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 that, in that era segment uh, but Paul and Silas for the preaching of the gospel was thrown in prison can I get a witness here and they were thrown in prison uh, and the Bible said uh, the, the, the prisoner the keeper of the prisoner was given a strict charge to keep them in the inner prison. And when I researched that, they said it was deep in the dungeon for two reasons. One, for security, uh, that they make sure they are there, praise God, and they can't escape. And the other security was to make sure the mob doesn't destroy them, the other prisoner doesn't destroy them. But not only were they uh, were told to put them in the inner prison, but they were told to fasten their feet in the stocks. I mean, when I look at them, he said, they stretch them and they fasten their feet in a wooden and chain stuck to the wall. So these men were stretched physically and then their feet were fasting. God, imagine the excruciating pain. You can't this, you can't, you can't do nothing. You are just there. I want you to take a moment, us to take a moment and think for a while. Oh my God. And the Bible said they were not backsliders. Am I talking right? The Bible said they were holy men of God. They were apostles of the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get a witness here? 
the holiday. They love God. They serve God. Why should they be in that kind of situation? And what was the reason? They were pressured not to preach in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. They were pressured because the anointing power of the Holy Ghost came upon them and they rebuke a possessed girl. Get demon out of her. Can I get a witness here? It was the anointing of the Holy Ghost that was up on them and they rebuked that girl and when they saw that everything was over they turned on them and beat them and put them into prison. I got news for us today. Those of, those of us who are shrinking with the anointing because of what people say are sorry for you. And let me tell you something. It's not easy not to shrink. I can tell you that. Can I say it again? It's not easy not to shrink. Not to shrink. You've got a purpose in your heart. That by the grace of God. If I stand alone. I'm going to let the Lord use me for his glory. I'm going to let the Lord have his way. Because you don't have friends. When you're manifesting the anointing. You don't have friends. When God is using you. In a certain way. You don't even have some of the saints. That you preach to. When God is using you. Can I get a witness here? Because I want to know. Which one of us go to the doctor. And ask for our own medication. I want to know which one of us go to the doctor and said, I'm here. I got me tummy pain. I got me whatever the pain is. And I need you to prescribe me this. I want to know which one of us go to the doctor and said, whatever my situation is, you say you're going to surgery on me. I want you to cut me this way. And I want to make sure when you go in, you just remove this and that and don't touch that. Which one of us Go to the doctor and make all those stipulations concerning our life. You know we don't. We go in and they say sign this. Have you been asked to sign this stuff? You don't even know what you sign. One time I take a big heart and said I ain't signing nothing until I read it. They said go ahead. I'll be there until now. So many pages I don't even know what I'm reading. It's a lot of jargon that I don't understand. Yeah. So they weren't fighting me. They said, go ahead. So because they know I wouldn't get looked after. Yeah. By the time I finish you, nobody have time to wait on you. No, I said, will you please explain to me what I'm signing? In a nutshell, I said, oh, just sign. Pages after pages. So with our own life, we willingly sign and go stretch out. Talk to me here. With our own life. We sign. And when we sign, they said undress. When we undress, they said put on this. Whatever that is. Some of us don't even know how to put it on. But we put it on. And it's a lie here. And somebody came, come in, and maybe say good morning, good afternoon, whatever time of it, and they talk to you, and then they sort of string you up. And they said, We're going to give you something and, and put needles in you. You're all there. Taking all of that. Am I talking right? And they say, the Doctor will be ready for you in 20 or 30 minutes or whatever. And when you go in, you may have known when you go in. And somebody said, good morning, good afternoon, or how are you doing? And before you know it, you only know when you come out. If God had mercy upon you and you came out, can I get a witness here? Oh, hallelujah. You don't even know what happened to you. You woke up trying to figure out what's going on. Why am I here? Can I get a witness here? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. And you know what? It's a process of life. 
It's a part of life. Uh, nothing is wrong with it. And we roll with it as they say. But when we come to the body of Christ uh, and come to the ministry, uh, we will roll with it uh, as long as it suits us. Uh, we are very selective. Uh, well, let me tell you something. Uh, the God that I serve uh, is not selective. Uh, when you walk down to Lazarus' grave uh, and they were ready to criticize, uh, he didn't care uh, what they have to say. Uh, he turned his eyes uh, up to heaven uh, and he prayed uh, and he said, Lazarus, uh, come forward. <sighs> and he that was dead came forward. So we pick and choose what it is. The Apostle Paul and Silas was in there because of the anointing that God placed in their life. Going through a physical strain and the enemy tell them it doesn't work it. Quick, give it up. In church, it was stressful. I see folks today crying over stress and I'm not saying it's not real. But they hardly can handle themselves because of stress. Am I talking right? And I guess every one of us at some point in time face stress. But based on how we deal with it. For some people can't handle stress. Am I talking right? When stress like some people, they don't stop eat. They put another 15, 20 pounds. But, but, but this is what I heard. When stress like some people, they want chocolate, all sweets. Everything sweet. Until that stress goes away. We, we handle it in different different ways and this was no ordinary stress this was somebody serving God and I'm talking to the body of Christ that we are serving God and when we serving God yes stress will show up can I get a witness here because we are a target to the enemy oh hallelujah and sometimes we create this stress we open the doors for this stress can I get a witness here sometimes we step in the mud oh God can I get a witness in the house the mud splash on us but because we step in the mud if we never step in the mud we would have avoid the splash but we step in it you step in the splash and you create a stress and we have to deal with it touch your neighbor and say deal with it oh hallelujah and so think about these men men of God in that situation what they could do they could say you know what I don't want to bother with this anymore I'm going to pull my way through this. And when I get out of this, done. I'm done. done. People backslide for less than that. Yes, Am I talking right? Yeah. Members quit church yeah. for less than that. Yes. Because somebody offended them. Yes. And they said, forget it. I don't want to be in this. I'm gone. Am I talking right? Yeah. And what we don't understand that we're not quitting on God. No. We're quitting on no. ourselves. We are giving up. This salvation is not predicated on your brother or your sister or your pastor or your prophet or your providence. It's predicated on Jesus Christ and what you do. You have already laid the foundation and the way you build is very, very important. Nobody go to hell for nobody. You go to hell because of you. You're not going to hell because somebody sent you there. You send yourself, we send ourselves. And so Paul and Silas said, no, no, no. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stay with this. And think about it. As I read the scripture, the Bible said, look in your Bible. He said, at midnight. Somebody said midnight. midnight. Oh, God of mercy. At midnight. Paul and Silas did what? Uh, uh, what? What? What you and I do at midnight? Lord Jesus, we have a way when midnight faces us to carry on in the most ungrateful way. And as long as you are born again, you go face midnight. Am I talking right? And don't tell me it's your unsafe friends. Because if the house is filled with Christians only, you still go face midnight. A matter of fact, 
Can I get a witness here? You're going to face more midnight with Christians than you face with unsaved. Oh, shh. Oh, shh. If five Christians live in the same house, I guarantee you I'll have a very busy spiritual guidance season. I will not left empty handed. I will never get much rest. But can I repeat it? If five Christians live in the same house, even though each of them have their own independent room and amenities, I promise you, I will have a very busy spiritual guidance season. There will be no rest. Can I get a witness here? Because for whatever the reason, they can't get along. Or can I get a witness here? I don't know why. It should not be. There should be joy. And speak about. And full of glory. Because everybody is walking in the light. Everybody is in the fellowship of Jesus Christ. Everybody is saved. But oh my God. For whatever the reason, it doesn't work. If I have two Christian and three and save, I may go there two or three times. Am I talking right? Can I get a witness here? And two out of the three times is the unsaved going to call me and said, you're going to come talk to them Christian because I don't understand. Oh, you didn't hear what I say. Paul and Silas decide. At midnight, somebody said midnight. They say, we go pray. And they pray at midnight, they turn the pressure into prior because prior changes things. Can I get a witness here? When you don't know what to do in your circumstance, open your mouth, turn your eyes towards heaven and say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help have I known. Can I get a witness here? Because sometimes it's not here. Sometimes it's not here. In no wisdom, no brain work, only God had the answer. Can I get a witness here? Because why, Pastor? Because sometimes you difficult, people difficult, who you're dealing with difficult, everybody around you difficult, and only God is not difficult. So turn your eyes upon Jesus and call him. I said, it's me, O oh Lord. It's me, O oh Lord. I'm standing in the need of prayer. He's not my mother. He's not my father. But it's me. I need an answer. I need to hear from you. I need a word from you. The enemy comes here like a flood. Confusion show up. But I need a word from you. Because many times we don't have the answer. We don't know what is the answer. If we see the answer in the Johnny cake, we eat the cake. And still don't realize that we eat the answer. Because we don't know the answer. What was Paul and Silas supposed to do? Even if they backslide, they're dead. In a moment like that, but they were already, re already resolute. And they said, God, we trust you. Yeah. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. They prayed and they sang praises unto God. In the midst of their crunch. In the midst of their pressures. In the midst of the influence, in the midst of the intimidation, in the midst of the squeezing, in the midst when they seem like might as well, you let it go and give up and say, oh no, we're going to hold on to God.
was uh, I'd change it and, uh, and if I was the old thing they were singing uh, I'd praise him uh, I'd praise him uh, I'd praise him uh, for what he has done uh, he has done uh, so much for me uh, and the Bible said the prisoners uh, in the prison uh, they heard them uh, and when you pray uh, against your pressure uh, the first thing going to happen uh, there'll be an earthquake uh, a spiritual uh, earthquake uh, can I get a witness here to break up the ground that's so hard around you? Can I, can I, can I get a witness here? Oh, hallelujah. But you got to pray under pressure. 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 Turn that pressure into pride. Why, Pastor? Because we don't have the answer. Nobody has the answer. Only God. We don't know what to do. The man of God says, God, there is so much a great company come out against us. And we have no might. Oh, God of mercy. Against this great company. But our eyes... Am I talking right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, Jesus. Armies. After armies came out. We are one little people. It doesn't make sense we attempt to fight. Because we can't win. But God. Our eyes. He turned his eyes. Up to heaven. Under pressure. He took the pressure. And turned it into a prayer. And the Bible said. The army turned against one another. Why? Because when you pray, there'll be an earthquake. Can I get a witness here? Do you want an earthquake in your situation? Turn your prayer, your pressure into prayer and call God. Tell him about it. He got about that. Heart start to shake. What happened when the heart shake? In form of a earthquake, buildings, the buildings that were firm and rooted and deep, break apart, torn down. Sometimes the earth beneath you is so hard. You try to plant, but nothing. It's so hard. You try to dig, but you can't go down. Where can I get a witness here? Under so much pressure, everything seems hard. Everything seems tough. But pray a little prayer. A whisper a prayer in the morning. A whisper a prayer at noon. A whisper a prayer in the evening. Pray, pray. Yeah. Earth start to shake. Prison start to shake. Notice something here. Notice something here. They were intimidated. They were pressured. And their life was about to go. But they said, God, you see, trust is a very serious thing. They trust God so much. They say, God, we don't even care. No, we don't trust God that way, no. no. We only say we trust God that way. Yes, so true. No, we don't. We don't. So true. We don't trust God that way. So we could never be Peter, James, and John. <laughs> because we are two touches. We love ourselves so much that we could never. If somebody insults you, you don't come to church for 10, 12, 16, 3, 4 years, whatever the time is. You can't be. You can't be Peter. No. No. Talk to me here. If somebody just do something to offend you, you put on all your responsibilities. Until you please yourself, then you, you come on top, pick up your responsibility again. You could never. We could never. We could never be that. No, 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 no. These men. Said God, you have the answer. The earth shake, prison shake, and the next thing was the doors open. Can I get a witness here? Who are you complaining to? They can't open the door. Am I talking right? 
some of us don't have no talk because we talk too much. Can I get a witness here? Oh God have mercy. Sometimes trouble come to harden you. Trouble come to purify you. Trouble come to get you to a stage where you can say, thank you, Jesus. I can ride upon the water now. Now I don't have to go under. God, I'm coming over. Can I get a witness here? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not all the time tears go save you. Can I get a witness here? Because many times tears look for sympathy. You need to dry up your tears. Pull up your belt. Straighten your shoulders. It's about the grace of God. I'm a child of God. I've been traveling for a mighty long time. Mighty long way. Mighty long way. Lord, you brought me from a mighty long way. Some through the fire. Some through the water. Some through the flood. But all come through the blood. I've been coming for a very long time. God, I'm determined to hold on. To the end, God, I know my feet may be mistalked, they may stretch me, they may hang me, they may abuse me. But praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord for what He has done for me. For I'm coming out, I'm coming out, I'm coming out by the grace of God, I'm coming out. I pray. Not. Some things we're fighting, we're fighting a losing battle because we're going up against it in flesh. And when we go up in flesh, we'll get arrested, we'll get charged for wounding people. Can I get a witness here? Charge for assault. Can I get a witness here? I charge for slandering. Oh, hallelujah! But Paul says it's not flesh and blood. His principalities, in his powers, his rulers of darkness, his spiritual wickedness in our places. We're coming against not flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness and rulers of darkness. Our weapon is prior. Can I get a witness here? Put on the whole armor of God that he may be able to resist to withstand the wiles of the devil pull out your prior pull out your prior weapon pull out your prior weapon for the earth will shake the doors will open how many want the doors to be open we thank God for the closed door but my God he got some doors he ready to open but we gotta pray we gotta pray we gotta pray under pressure you gotta pray with your face down you gotta pray your back against the wall you gotta pray turn your pressure into prayer and let go and say your prayer hey Ali Bakas hallelujah Hallelujah. 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 Because if your pressure Jesus. get the better of you, yes. it's going to crush you. Yes. It's going to keep you down. Keep you down. Oh, but you got to rise up. He yes. said, no, 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 no. no. I got to get out of this. Yes. I'm more than a conqueror. My God, my God. And the Bible said, my God. the prior yes. and the praises went up. And the next thing you know, the prison uh, doors open. After the earth shake, how many doors were believing God open. to open for us? Oh, yes. But we ain't praying. We're complaining. Hallelujah. We're reporting. Can I get a witness here? Hallelujah. I said we ain't praying. 
She said, ain't we complaining? We reporting. God don't want us to report. God don't want us to complain. God want us to pray. Can I get uh, I'm just telling you what I'm facing, what I'm going through. God, I want that. He wanted to tell him what we're facing. Tell him what we're going through. One good thing about God, among many, many other good things, is that God don't require you and I to put the language together in proper pronoun. Can I get a witness here and to approach him with this dignified vocabulary? We can just get to God and say, God, it's me. It's me, Nathan. You see my condition. You see my problem. I don't even know where to start. But help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. You see them enemy. Help me, God. You see them hypocrites. Help me, God. You see them coming from my life. Help me, God. Take them over, God. Can I get a witness? Oh, God. I can talk to him anytime, anywhere. Any hour, any minute, any second, I need no appointment. Just pick up the telephone. Telephone to glory. It don't have to be a long prayer. It can be 30 seconds. It can be 15 seconds. It can be 5 seconds. How can I get a witness? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. A moment with Jesus. A pardon receive. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Hallelujah. The man said, Lord, help my unbelief. Can I get a witness here? The man said, Lord, be merciful unto me, a sinner. Can I get a witness here? Pray. Pray. And let the doors open. Not report. Not complain. I found out that when you report and complain, you're as confused. As ever, because everybody have a version to tell you. And many times, I found out people tell you to do what they would not do, and true, you won't tell God. You get up and go do exactly what they would not do, but what they told you to do. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Any time you say, if it was me. I would have tell him you don't follow them. It's a big untruth. Am I talking right? You don't need that. You need to go to God. Because sometimes when you go to God, you just say, humble yourself. <laughs> you don't need to fight no battle, just no battle, just humble oh god of mercy can i get a witness that's all he tells you and he said hold your peace have nothing to say leave it in my hands can i get the witness here oh glory to god and so we want the doors to open but we are complaining and we are reporting it's not taking us anywhere Everybody see it differently. Do you remember when you go to school, if you had read that book, this man with his son and the donkey? Yes. <laughs> We're going to the market. And they start out. They were riding the donkey. And they said, I think they were walking with the donkey. One crowd said, how foolish that is. You could have ride the donkey. And they start riding the donkey. Both of them on the donkey. Another group of people say, what a wicked <laughs> people. <laughs> what wicked people. <laughs> you all pressure the donkey. You should be carrying the donkey. <laughs> they turn the donkey upside down. <laughs> Time up with pole. Put him on the shoulder, carrying the donkey. They reach for another town. And the other people say, wait a minute. What a set of stupidity. What is this? Why don't they just let the donkey walk? You know what? The donkey was walking from the very beginning. 
but they never had a mind of their own. And everybody gave them advice to take it. And at the end of the day, the donkey was walking. And still, they have to put down the donkey to walk. We won't open doors, but we are not praying. We are complaining and we are reporting. Can I get a witness here? And until we cut out the complaining and cut out the reporting and start to pray, can I get a witness here? We will not see no victory the way we're supposed to see it because God of the answer can we get a witness here? <sighs> Hallelujah! 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 Oh, we complain to feel better about ourselves. Mm -mm. We report to just to confirm that we're doing the right thing. You know, sometimes we tell folks stuff and we, get, we end up mad, getting mad with them. Because I don't know why we tell them, you know. Because we tell them with an expectation for them to agree with us. And that's the worst kind of telling. Don't tell me because you have an expectation in the back of your mind that I'm going to agree with you. Tell me with an open mind because you don't know what my answer is. And if you expect me to agree with you, don't tell me. And folks find that very disappointing many times. Because they said, I don't know what he's telling me. All because I did not agree with you. You don't want no help. You're looking for confirmation. Can I get a witness here? And there are some folks that agree with you with everything that you say and do. Those are wicked people. You don't want me to preach, but it's true. Those are wicked people. Yes, yes, yes. Because we're not always right. No. I don't care if it's me, prophet, or anybody. We are humans. We make mistakes. Yes. Can I get a witness? And sometimes we say things that's not right. And it takes somebody else, regardless of your position. Can I get a witness here? <laughs> Hallelujah. God can use anybody. He please to impart wisdom in your life. Can I get a witness here? Oh, glory to God. So when you got somebody who's telling you you're right all the time, they're wicked people. They don't mean you no good. Because you're not right. If my directors keep telling me I'm right all the time, I want to stay away from them. Because no, something is not clicking. Can I get a witness here? So we report to get confirmation. We report to go in sympathy. But if you want the doors to open, tell your neighbor you got to pray. Because you see, and there's something else about heaven. The Bible doesn't say what they prayed about. But there's something else about getting the door open. You have to be honest in our prayer. For sometimes we are dishonest. Boy, we can't dishonest already, you know. Um, we're so chronic with it that we don't realize what we are doing. Because it's one thing to dishonest the missionary and to tell her something that I, I really, I tell her something different. But sometimes we go to God, you know. And we are talking to God. Yes. And behaving like Judas. Yes. Saying, is it I? <laughs> come on, come on now. We, we are talking to God. And we are behaving like Judas. Saying, is it I, Lord? Lord, I come to you. If I have any sin, wash them away. Give me a break. If there's any fault in me, if Lord, you know me inside out, but if you see anything that's not pleasing to you, wash it. What are we talking about? If you see anything, it is there. God, the dirt you see me, wash it out. Yes. Can I get a witness here? God, my shortcomings, help me to overcome. Can I get a witness? Come on, help me here. Be real. And we go to God sometimes ignorantly, pretending like we are all dead, and asking God to go search if. You know, if you find anything, how hard we have to search. 
And what is so disappointing? God, do have to search for us in look when we see it. And we come in talking about if. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. Yet we are saying, God, wash them wicked and safe. Cleanse them from their sins, Lord. Clean them up, God. Save them from hell. But if you find. You know, that if is serious, you know. Because Jacob get full of himself and tell him, Uncle, that if you find the idol with anybody in my camp, let that one die. Ignorantly did it. Never dreamed that his wife would have the idol. Am I talking right? And the moment he opened his mouth and spit it out, it was sealed and signed. Hey, Rachel, never make the journey. Can I get a witness here? For her husband killed her a long time ago. Because of if. If God above you. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, glory to God. So we go to God. We just be honest. Tell God like it is. We are not telling him because he don't know. We are telling him to recognize that we know. God, this is where I am. And I need you to open my doors. So God, clean up. Do whatever you have to do. And I thank you for victory. Because the pressure, the pressure is too much. The doors open. Turn the pressure into prayer earthquake doors open and the next thing that happened the bands that which fastened them that old chain that the enemy chain us with that we can go this far and no further because they prayed can I get a witness here the chain was broken come on and help me here church glory to God you need the chains to be broken can I, can I get a witness here? Oh, my, 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 my. Hallelujah. Complaining only sink you further. Reporting only confusion. You got to pray that the chains will be broken. The bands were loose. They could have kicked their foot. They could have waved their hands. They could have. Because they prayed. Talk to me, church. Ay, 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 ay. They were now free to move about. Why? Because under pressure, they prayed. They turned it into supplication, into prayer. They talked to God about it. Church, I'm telling you some situation. You only can talk to God about it. Some folks never hear nothing God say yet. You're telling you, left them more confusion than anything else. When Job friends came to him and they did not understand what God was doing, they came to comfort Job. And after seven days, can you imagine you're in a situation, your friend comes sitting on looking at you for seven days and seven nights, not a word. That alone sinks you deeper. In your bad condition. <laughs> because you're not losing your mind. I know you're wondering. What is this? That you could come here. And sit down all this time. And have nothing to say. And at the end of it all. When they open their mouth. They said. No sir. No sir. You must have violated the laws of God. You, you job? Uh -uh. You are hands to those who have none. What wrong with you now? What caused you to be like this? They become accusatory. They were accusing him of doing something wrong. Can I get a witness here? Oh, there's something secret you have in corner there. That's why this and that. Can I get a witness here? 
oh God of mercy, they were going down a road and a path and little did they know. Job just said, you know what, in his heart and mind, I ain't gonna worry about what you're saying because you don't understand the Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Job chain was broken because he continued to pray and to seek the Lord and the God came through for him. Turn that pressure into prayer. The bands were loose. The keeper of the prison was sleeping. That's how sure he was. He knew that they were secure. He didn't have to worry. He went to bed. And he was sleeping. He awoke out of his sleep. And when he woke up, he saw the prison door open. First, he thought he was dreaming. Then he rubbed his eye. <laughs> Something ever happened, he said, This can't be for real. By the way, have you ever gone to bed in the day? And dream and woke up and glad you wake up. <laughs> oh God. Listen again, listen again, listen. If you ever take a midday nap and you dream <laughs> when you woke up, you say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You thank God it was a dream. <laughs> but it wasn't a midday nap. It was midnight. And the Bible said, when the keeper of the prison realized it's real, it's reality, the doors are open. There's only one punishment for that is death. They go kill them. And they said, before they kill us. Before they kill me, you let me just do it myself. I can do it easier and a nicer way. Not to mention the humiliation before the death. Because you fail as a guard in your duty. And they drew the sword. He drew the sword to kill himself. But Paul and Silas, yeah, in the dark, you know, no light. Hallelujah. They said, do thyself. Look in your Bible, it's there. No harm. For we are all here. We are just having a thank you Jesus time. Can I get a witness here? <laughs> we are just having a hallelujah time. We are giving glory and honor and praise to God. This is just a Pentecostal prayer meeting. Don't worry yourself. And they run in with a light. And they came trembling. Why? Because somebody turned their pressure into prayer. Can I get a witness here? And at the end of it all, they ask the question, what can I do to be saved? What can I do to become like you? That's in essence what they were saying. Because you're different men. You, you are. You're not the normal. What you're displaying here is not, it's not in the norm. What can I do to be saved? And Paul told them, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shall be saved. Church, turn in the pressure into prayer. Now let's quickly wrap this up. Now, sometimes we are pressured by someone. Alright? Number one, we're pressured by someone. And that can take a toll on us. What we need to do is turn that pressure into prayer. Can I get a witness here? Come on, can I get a witness here? Turn that same pressure into prayer. Talk to God about it. Our kids go to school and face the same level of pressure too. Yes. Am I talking right? Yes. When we were going to school, we face some level of pressure. Yes. I don't care what time we're living in, every time is serious. Yes. We said this time is more serious than the time when I was growing up. My time was serious too so because that's what we have to work with. Yes. And we use it to the best of our ability. Yes. Am I talking right? Yes. There were still kids cutting class, running away, doing all kind of stuff. Yes. It was serious. Yes. Am I talking right? We used to call them skull school. Oh yes. This was always happening. You name it. It never. We use what we have at the time. This age is more technologically advanced. And the whole thing. They're still using what they have. When you're pressured by someone. Turn it into pride. 
Sometimes you've been so pressured, you feel like you want to give in. No, have a little talk. Can I get a witness here? Oh, glory to God. Have a little talk with Jesus. Sometimes, number two, you're pressured by yourself. Because you want to achieve certain things. Your expectation put pressure on you. Because sometimes our expectation is not matching up our ability. And we ignorantly refuse to come to terms to it. You expect to be a doctor and you can't multiply two by two. I know you're going to run in some serious trouble. Am I talking right? <laughs> but your whole thought process, I have to be a doctor. I would advise you stop falling in love with the coat and the stethoscope and start falling in love with the subject. Am I talking right? With the science and the match that's going to help you to get there. Oh, glory to God. <laughs> Pressured by yourself. Sometimes we are pressured by ourselves because of our expectation and because of what we think should happen. We don't like how we look. Oh, let me say it again. We don't like how we look. And I got news for you. You can't change that now. Nothing is going to change it. No plastic surgery, no high-end surgery, no needle surgery. It's coming right back down to you. It is what it is. <laughs> a whole lot of people age and pull it up. And before you know it, come back down. It's the process. And let me advise you, leave it alone because when you pull it up and you come back down, it's hard for your condition. It's worse. So just leave it. Just age beautifully. And let the Lord, he beautify the me with salvation. But, but, but we, we are dissatisfied. Pressure with our color. Whew. One time I was there, you know. I said, me too black. I mean, that's why I'm so black. And by the way, it wasn't even about being black. It was just my face. I don't know what that is. Just so much darker than my hands. Even now, not because I'm in America. Even though I was in Jamaica, you look at my hands. People always ask me, "Why are your hands is like this?" And put it in my face. And in all my hands are different. My face are. So they had a cream called Ambi. Anybody remember Ambi? <laughs> I don't know if they still have it, but there's a cream called Ambi. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you save. To God be the glory. Because when you're in the world, you know, you don't think about nobody but yourself. And I couldn't care what nobody says. I, they have the ambi in the red tube and the green tube. The red tube is very strong. <laughs> but the green tube is kind of moderate. And I got the green tube. And boy, I put that ambi on. And let me tell you something. I said the ambi is going to bring my color just the complexion just like my hand. <laughs> After one tube, two tube, three tube. Don't them say you turn white man. <laughs> because when I look in the mirror, I'm white yeah. all over. You don't understand. It was burning out the pigmentation. Yes. The good quality pigmentation yes. of my skin was going out and instead of get a brown complexion I start look white in the face and the neck not lining up so I have to quit the ambi sometimes we are dissatisfied with our color we are pressured I know I'm preaching right we bring on pressure on our own self because our expectation it's not matching up with reality and with our ability. And sometimes we just need to be satisfied. A matter of all the time if we are in God, we need to be satisfied with who God created us to be. And bless the Lord, all oh my soul, and all that's within me. Bless.
Christ is holy name. Can I get a witness here? Oh, glory to God. Give God glory, honor, and praise that you have a face, you got a nose, you got a hands, you got eyes, and they're working right. Oh, they may not be, they might not be beautiful, and because you say so, because I have the most beautiful eyes in this place. You don't hear what I'm saying. I said they got the most beautiful nose in this place. You may beg to differ, but that's your opinion. Can I get a witness here? Because when I want to breathe at night, it's my beautiful nose sending out the air through the nostril and not your. Can I get a witness here? Hallelujah. I got to be satisfied with what God put me together. Can I get a witness here? I may admire you, but that's for you. I got to embrace me, God, that's for me. Come on and give the Lord praise. Pressure myself for what I cannot change. Trying to be what I don't have the ability to be. Pushing myself to stuff that are not reality. That I know like I know is just empty words. They were reading the scripture and on the radio. And I said to Brother David, it's so funny. Saul wants to kill David. And Saul. And David praying that God protect him. And Saul saying, God deliver David in my hand. I said, what is this? And she said, no. He's an hypocrite. A wicked and wicked. Because you know God is not with him. I pretend him, I pretend. Pretend like some Christian. Who know God is not with them, but they're still pretending. Which is true. We got to be real. Don't pressure yourself for things you know in truth and in reality. You know, you know, every one of us know how far we can go. And yes, there are some of us can go a little further with a little hand, but I'm telling you, we know how far we can go. Our extremity, we know. Can I get a witness here? Because if we never know when we are pushed to the extreme and we reach the extreme, we say, oh, no further. Stop right here. But we're pressured by ourselves. Pressure ourselves to do the stuff that we know ain't real. And pressured by ourselves to do the stuff that we know we are not going to do. We can make it. But we tell ourselves every year, you know, like I said, I'm going to save. I'm going to save. I'm going to save $10,000 this year. <laughs> save. Every new year resolution, I'm going to save. <laughs> you don't have me yet. If I could live my life all over again, I would do things differently. Stop it. You would do things worse. Because changes doesn't happen from the outside. It comes from the inside. Can I get a witness here? So turn that pressure into pride. Number three. Sometimes we are, we are pressuring to someone. We are pressuring. Apart from we pressure ourselves, or pressure by something, sometimes we now become a pressure to others. Oh God of mercy. Just on them. Constantly. And that's the moment we want to turn that pressure into prayer. Because we can't change what's going on. So why don't we just get on our knees before God. And just say God. We're playing bishop and prophets and priests and leaders and big brothers and big sisters. We can't change it. We've been trying for a long time. Why don't we just turn it over to almighty God. The same amount of time we invest in pressure when the person and we see it not working. Why don't we take that amount of time and say God I'm coming to you now. On behalf of Mary and behalf of Harry and behalf of Chan and behalf of Joe. Lord God almighty. I tried my best Lord. My best ain't good enough. So now Lord I come to you. I am harnessing all this energy now. All this that I put in trying to turn him or her around. And now God I come to you. Will you please turn them around? Hallelujah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You call the abortion. Because sometimes the more we got them is the more 
the more resentful. Am I talking right? They become. Is the more determined they are to do. They become more defiant. That's the word I'm searching for. They resist even more. They take a resentment towards your attitude. And so now you're going to say, God, I can't do it no longer. I'm pressured, but I'm going to turn this pressure into prayer. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to pray that need an answer. I have a problem I can't solve. God, I don't mean to bother you. But all I need is something from you. Oh, hallelujah. It's me, oh, Lord. I'm here. Turn in my pressure into prayer. <sighs> because prayer changes things. Am I talking right? And Jesus is the greatest example of that. In the garden. When the weight of the world reaches him, it was so pressuring. He said, Father, if you be willing, let this cup pass. But, 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 oh, no, 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 Nevertheless, not my will, but thy will be done. The Bible said his sweat became, as it were, drops of blood. He was so heavy under the weight. Listen to me, church. And even on the cross, when they hang him and they pierce him, oh my God, he could have called angels to deliver him. But he turned that pressure. It come and come on, church. <laughs> A glory to God. And he said, Father, forgive them. Can I get a witness here? <laughs> For they know not what they are doing. Can I get a witness here? Come on, come on, come on, come on. He could have do something. He could have given in. But he turned it into prayer. Can we turn our pressure into prayer? Yes, we can. Can I get a witness here? Talk to your neighbor. Yes, we can. Yes, by the grace of God. We can turn that pressure into prayer. Because let me tell you something, church. Nothing going to move us now but prayer. I'm telling you, you can't approach people. No, no. Am I talking right? It's going to be prior now. We're talking about letting the Lord go before. And now we got to go before. No, now we have to go before. Now we better allow him to go before. He always wanted to go before, but we won't allow him. We're going to have to allow him now to go before. And if we're going to allow God to go before, we have to seek him in prayer so he can talk to us uh, and give us directives. Uh, can the come back singers? Uh, oh, hallelujah. And help us to navigate our way. Because sometimes we feel big and broad and bad. Like we can handle it. I always tell Christian folk, you say, well, no matter how you're anointed, no matter how you got power, you don't approach a madman. <laughs> don't. If you approach a mad person, make sure it's the Holy Ghost. Take you up. And say, go get him. Because if he's not the real Holy Ghost, and you get up, in your zeal and approach that insane person you're going in with clothes and you're coming out with none am I talking right here oh it's for real oh hallelujah oh hallelujah oh hallelujah so we better learn how to turn the pressure into prayer we're going to seek God when we're pressuring someone when somebody's pressuring by themselves or by something, we're going to seek God because the situation is bigger than we can handle. We can't fix it. Only God can fix it. And sometimes the person is bent and going their own way. Their knowledge, their understanding is nowhere near what you're trying to tell them. It's so dangerous to reason with a person who is not thinking, believing, saying, knowing anything that you're talking about and is have a totally different way of life. Right. Gotta leave it in the hands of God. 
So that's principalities and powers now you're coming against. So prior. How many times prior works for you and I? How many times we approach it so many times in our own self and our own wisdom and, and, and it become a mess. But when we turn it into prior, God answers. Stand with me and turn it around. We cannot allow the pressure to take us under. We have to turn it into prior. And it start with us. Am I talking right? Amen. Pastor, I would love for all my children to give their heart to the Lord. What are you doing about it? How much time are you investing in going before God to pray about your sons and your daughters to ask God to save them? Count! How many times you curse them out compared to how many times you pray for them? Do the mat. Count how many times you tell them who they are and what they are and what's coming to them and how they're going to end up and compare that to how many times you spend 10 minutes in prior calling the name to God. He called up all shut up. Hallelujah. And I submit to you that's not working so turn it into prior. Stop cursing them. Stop saying bad things about them. Stop putting your bad mouth on them if that's the case. Uh, and open your mouth and spit out words. Uh, a prior to Almighty God. And call His name. Uh, and call her name. Uh, and say, God, you said my children are supposed to be blessed. Uh, I'm here, Lord. Uh, have your way. It's not according to your time. It's according to God's time. For somebody pray for you. And when they would have gotten frustrated, they continue to pray until you come in. Can I get away, Miss here? I say you didn't came just by yourself. Somebody prayed. Oh, hi, 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 hi. They may not know you, but they pray for you. They ask God to save, to save, to save. And you are a part of the community, and God save you. We talk about investing in our children and our, grand our grandchildren. But our investment is cursing them out. Telling them this and telling them that. As Christians, why don't we get on our face before God and pray. Pray for them daily so the enemy don't have them. Because when the enemy get them, it's hard to snatch them back. Can I get a witness here? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know how many testimony I heard? I'm closing with this term. You're, you're prior, you're pressure into prior. This preaching brother saw God's program, uh, Pastor Tar Tar Terrence Nash. And he said he too, he and his brother was so bad. We're so out of line. Drugs and all the mess and everything. I'm just quoting a little bit of what he preached, giving his testimony. But he said he had a godly mother. A mother that believed God. Oh, Baba Kaja. And he said his mama would pray for the morning, noon, and night. And he said when they go out in the night, go do they stop from the party and the church and everything and they're coming in that 1 a.m. 2 a.m. in the morning their mama was set up at the door oh hallelujah and she had her bottle of olive oil and as they come in she would dose them with the olive oil i said in the name of jesus you belong to god you belong to god the devil will have you you're a child of the king he can't have my seed you belong to god it was the pressure she turned into prior and night after night weeks after weeks month after month she never let go she come in their room she lay hands on them they laugh about it but she was serious about believing God until one day Jesus came along and he rescued brother Terrence and he rescued his brother and today they are preaching the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ turn 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 your pressure in the prayer come on ahead me come on ahead me come on ahead me Danny Swabbit said he told his mama I don't want to go to no church I'm done with church he was sitting in the car 
his mom was driving. He was about 16, 17. He's a finish with church. She doubled her face. She pulled back. She gave him a sock. She said, boy, are you ready to die? You're going to go to church. You belongs to God. You belongs to God. Can I get a witness today? Today, Pastor Donnie is preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Turn your pressure. Turn your pressure. Turn your pressure. In the prayer. In the prayer. And pray. And let the Lord have his way. Oh God. Let me tell you something. And I'm saying to all of us. We better don't make no fun. And no joke. And believe that. Our when I was growing up. And my mom screamed at me. Which she really does. Because at one time she talking. But. When she raised her voice. Like her. Huh? We jump. Hear me good. This generation. They never watch Eccles and Jekylls. <laughs> those of you coming from back then. Those cartoons. They never watch Eccles and Jekylls. <laughs> and Rody Runner. And Beep Beep. Ah, no. <laughs> They are looking at some stuff now. Yes. Some monster kind of stuff. Yes. That make the most outrageous sound. Yes. So you're like. Ah! Don't no, have no effect. Am I talking right? Plus they're smarter. More intelligent. Faster and savvy and witty. Than you and I. Can I get a witness here? So the only thing we can use to curb them is prayer. Can I get a witness here? Oh, we can pray past the flesh and get in the spirit. Prayer, turn them around. Transform them. Oh, so what we got to use is prayer. So get with it. Get with it. It's a new generation. Get with it. It changes. It changes things. So we can't outsmart them. But we can't outpray them. We can pray. And sometimes when you get the grandkids and you're holding them, don't just hug them and tell them how sweet they are. Hug them right and say, pray for them. Father, in the name of Jesus, cover this one, Lord, that blood prevail. This one belongs to you. Am I talking right? Can I teach you something here today? Oh, no, 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 When they come give you a hug, whether they're 15, 20, whatever, you hug them but breathe a prayer in your heart. Say, God, here is he now in my hands. Take him in your hands, God. Here is he, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord, oh, Lord. Hallelujah. Because we need them. Turn your prayer, your pressure into prayer. Stop the reporting. And stop the complaining. And the hurt will shake. Loose up around you. The doors will open. The chains will fall. Can I get a witness here? And you'll be free to give God glory, honor, and praise. Put your hands together and tell the Lord thank you. We thank you for tuning in today. Heaven bless you as you continue to receive from the Lord. Lift your hands with me, church. Father, in the name of Jesus. We pray for those who have tuned in today. Will you meet their needs according to your will? Whatever those needs are. Let your perfect will be done. Save, heal, deliver, and set free. As we give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on and put your hands together. God bless you. See you next week. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah.